the syllabus asks you to understand how digital television is modulated. It's really important that you find a way to compress videos because uncompressed videos, let's say if we just pick a HDTV, 1920 times 1080 pixels is uh, 2,073,600 pixels. In a standard image on your screen, you have got uh, what they call a 24 bits, 65 million colours per pixel. So multiply that by three, gives you that many bytes. 6,220,800 bytes per image up on the screen, which is 6 meg, 25 frames a second, gives you 148 meg a second of images that are being processed in your digital television receiver and thrown up on the screen. A fair bit. Far more than your internet can carry. I'm pretty sure your internet at home does not carry 148 megabytes per second. Multiply by th that by 8 and I get 1200 megabits, 1 1.2 gigabits per second. Even the most modern um, fibre to the house does not deliver 1.2 gigabits a second. And yet you can transmit it through the airwaves and pick it up on a cheap $30 set-top box. So how JPEG works? JPEG is obviously picture compression. JPEG works by dividing up your image into the individual picture elements. Pixel is pix element, pixel, picture elements. Pictures are a series of picture elements displayed on a screen. Each picture element has got a colour value associated with it and a brightness. JPEG works by looking at the individual picture. Let's say this is part of a tree. There you go. There's a tree leaf coming through there like that. There's an actual leaf with a few lines looking like so. It divides up the entire picture into segments of 8 by 8 because computers work on binary. 2 cubed is 8. It works on 8 by 8, 2 to the power 6 is 64. It then has a look at that 8 by 8 pixels and it compares it against a standard frame and says where in that series of 8 by 8 pixels, I'll just fold the corner off that so you can see them both, are we close? And it says that basically one of these things here has got the most impact on that. JPEG also works by throwing away most of the colours. The eye only sees mainly black and white images and colours and added afterthought. While I'm talking here I'm going to put up an image of a black and white grayscale picture, sorry, I'm going to put up an image of a grayscale picture just with a coloured grid overlaid on it magnify in so you can see that your eye only sees black and white really and the colour is secondary to your perception compared to the brightness. So having a look back at this it's going to be basically saying that leaf is basically this part here is where most of the information that's where most of those changing information is. The 8 by 8 with every single pixel being different down the bottom here indicates an incredibly busy picture which this one isn't. So what the um, JPEG algorithm does it says there is every single possible combination of black and white and black and white pixels that's possible. There's 8 by 8, there's this every single possible combination and it combines them. It then has a look at that picture, says which one of these is most important. Then it throws away everything where it doesn't need to. It starts here. I'll try and hold that up there. 
starts there, goes down, goes up, goes across. Because usually it's this corner here is where most of the information is needed for the picture. It just gives each one of these a number. It says that's really important, that's 80% important, this is 60% important, that's 20% important, that's 5% important, and down here because I said this area here, they might be 15%, 10% important, all of those ones. So, it gives everything a number, and I end up with just basically, once again, I have converted my picture into a series of numbers. You don't need to know the details of JPEG compression. It's fairly complicated. What you do need to know is, it uses a mathematical process to convert a picture into grayscale image and a colour image and indicate what's really important off a standard map of what a, what's possible. So the JPEG compression, it's like going to a menu and saying I'll have this and I'll have this and I'll have this. The JPEG compression is saying this is 80% important, that's 20%, that's 10%, that's 60% and so on. It just picks out the important bits and sends them across. How the compression to a picture works, because the syllabus says you need to understand digital compression without getting technical. Every three seconds or so, a brand new complete image is transmitted, 6 meg. And that's basically a refresh frame. You've probably seen when you're um, watching TV and it's cloudy outside, the image disappears, then all of a sudden a brand new picture jumps up on the screen in front of you and you go, oh, okay, it's back again. Then that picture slowly degrades. You've probably seen when it's staticky, the picture turns into a whole series of blocks. And you see it basically coming out in squares and squares of colour. You know why that happens now, because the compression puts the TV screen into 8x8 eight eight squares. Then it puts, first step is it looks at them in big blocks, macro blocks, that are actually 16 by 16 pixels when it transmits and it's looking for information. And so you're seeing squares come up on the screen when there's a problem with the data transmission because of the compression algorithm. It's looking at the pictures of 8x8 eight eight, and if there's something wrong in the error, then the 8x8 eight eight square becomes corrupted, not an individual spot. So, the iframe happens every three seconds or so. The BMP frames are basically looking for changes. Right now, I am standing absolutely still. The only thing moving is by mouth. So, that means the only part of the picture that needs to move in this entire video is the section around my chin. Because of that, this video is fairly highly compressed. It is just sending 6 meg every 3 seconds and just sending maybe 32 by 32 pixels worth of information where my mouth is on this screen. But then when I move, of course, now it's got to translate with a lot more um, moving squares and moving parts of the image. So, what actually happens, like say here's one frame, here's another frame, there's 25 frames a second. The only parts of these two pictures that are moving are the car and the bird. So, when it's transmitting information, just to get the image small enough, it says, just translate that car, move it up 1.25 pixels that way. This bird block that out and put this new picture in here. So it just basically pulls the parts of the image out that it needs to change. And then every three seconds, it refreshes the whole image just in case it loses the plot. Now, of course, we're just looking at how digital TV works. The final bit, the quadrature amplitude modulation, it's 64 quam. So the way it works is you've got your series of ones and zeros. 64 means you can go from 0, 0, 0, 0, that's, that's that many zeros. This dot might be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0
So I've got 64 options there. So I've got five values. Just like so. So just as a recap, QAM64, you modulate the amplitude and the phase. First up, this is a sine wave, 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. Modulation of the first wave is at 45 degrees, which is there. And its amplitude is very small. So 45 degrees, I've picked a really bad one to start with, but let me try. Start, I'm glad I'm recording this in HD. There's. So there it is, there's your first wave. Low amplitude, that was maximum. So that is low amplitude at a phase of 45 degrees. For the second signal might be out here. That is 135 degrees, let's say that's 141 degrees and it's a fairly large amplitude. 141 degrees is just there, so it's going on the downstroke. The amplitude's that much. So there's our new amplitude, it now starts there, does the downstroke, one, two, and stops there. The third one is round here about 315, about 325 degrees, that's on the upstroke and it's in the middle. So let's just keep this going along. I'll just use green for the third one. And it's basically, there's its maximum amplitude. So it's going upstroke. So as you can see, our final radio wave that's transmitted is modulated using quadrature amplitude modulation. Just drawing it all in the same colour because it is all the same radio wave. And at each sudden phase change, the demodulator knows to um, interpret that as a particular series of ones and zeros. That's how they transmit large amounts of data, mainly using quadrature amplitude modulation. That is the basics of digital television.